I've been teaching Camtasia users how to make videos for years. And if there's one thing that consistently scares new video creators more than anything else in Camtasia, it's the timeline. That's this area down here with the layers of tracks, objects of all different sizes, spooky numbers, and the playhead. This space can be intimidating, but it doesn't have to be. In fact, the timeline is actually where you can create the coolest effects that Camtasia has to offer. So in this short video series, I'm going to explain how to use the timeline, exposing just enough of its power and flexibility to make you dangerous. In a good way, of course. Oh, and also, we're not completing a step-by-step -step project in these lessons, and you won't be asked to follow along with your own copy of Camtasia. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. To begin, a timeline is a visual, meaning something we look at, sequence. In this case, showing the various media clips that make up your Camtasia video. So from left to right, whatever's happening first in your video will be leftmost on your timeline. And then you might switch to another scene midway through your video. And then finally you get into the meat of your Camtasia video, which is often screen recording with narration. In a simple video, these scenes can all sit on a single timeline track, like how you see them here. But they don't have to, which is something I'll save for the second lesson. By the way, this playhead that you see me dragging around is your tool to preview what's on screen at any given moment in your video. By moving it back and forth, left to go earlier in your video and right to go later, you can quickly see, frame by frame, what's happening at the point where the playhead is. The technical term for dragging the playhead is called scrubbing. Use that if you want to sound fancy. You can also position the playhead anywhere you'd like and then click play. This will kick off a little preview journey and you can click pause to stop it whenever you've seen enough. Previewing like this is also the easiest way to check any audio that may be present in your clips. Clips with audio display a waveform, which looks kind of like spikes bouncing up and down to represent the sounds in your video. Waveforms can be really helpful when editing, which we'll get to in a moment. But first, let's take a closer look at this media. As it sits, this left edge is the precise moment when the media appears in your video, kind of like its entrance onto the stage. And this right edge is when it ends, or when it disappears. In this case, being replaced by the screen recording. Did you notice how there's not much happening for the first few seconds of this clip, though? And like I mentioned before, the waveform helps us by confirming that the talking doesn't start until right about here. This means we're ready to make our first video edit. If that took you back to the scary place, don't worry, I promise to keep it simple. First, place your cursor over the left edge of the clip, then click and slowly drag to the right to trim the first few seconds, making sure to stop before the talking starts. This shortens the clip by removing the beginning part. And removing unnecessary bits is crucial to making videos that feel snappy and keep your viewers' attention. Our first edit is complete, but we do have a bit of an issue. When we trimmed, we left this gap in our timeline. Easy to fix, though. Simply select these rightmost clips and slide them back to the left, closing the gap and shortening the overall runtime of your video. It's tempting to call that enough work for one lesson, but I have one other thing to show you and I think you're gonna love it. When your video switches abruptly from one media to the next, this is called a jump cut. And there's nothing inherently wrong with jump cuts, but sometimes you want to smoothly transition from one clip to the next, or even add style and visual excitement to your scene changes. Camtasia makes this super easy to pull off with transitions. You'll find nearly 200 options here. Some are clean and subtle, while others are bright and bold. When you find one that seems promising, drag it from the panel here all the way down to where the two clips are touching. Then release and use the playhead to see how it looks. 
Don't like the one you chose as much as you thought you might? Just drag another one down right on top to replace it. Rinse and repeat until you're satisfied. Are you feeling dangerous yet? Well, we've only just begun. In our next lesson, we'll be exploring timeline track layering. See you there.